We are always here to entertain you with the latest information, gossip, and videos from our presenters. Nandela Watch Channel brings entertainment to your own doorstep. So please, do endeavor to subscribe, like, and share our videos to your friends and family because you don't want to miss out on this. This is your number one channel that you and I need to watch and always have. So please turn on your notification button so you can always be notified on our latest uploads. God bless you for joining the family. Bye. This is unlike the usual videos. This is purely a security alert. Let me reference when I was growing up as a child. Once we get back from school, once we're done eating, we we'll bring out our football in the afternoon to play. My father would say, no, the sun is too much. Everybody get inside. We we'll grumble. And before you get to know, my father would seize the football, the ball. Then a lot of us will now begin to pray for him to go and take his nap. And most times our, our prayers usually come true. It won't take that long. My father will just really leave to take his nap. And we'll rush to take the football and begin to play. What will wake him later will be at the time when the football hits the, roo the rooftop. The next will be, ah, I talked, I want these children not to play this football in this old zone. Once we hear his voice, everybody will begin to adjust. We'll comport ourselves. So many will even feel like if they've not been playing football. Because we know once it's coming out, it's coming out with a cane. So we don't want to be flogged. As children, without anyone teaching us, we understand very well our father is a leader. We understand very well he has the authority to take some decisions to punish us. So because of that, once he's awake, we behave ourselves. With time, we got to understand that he was actually fighting for the good of our future. And without more stress, once he tells us things, we take. But growing up as a kid, we usually feel he doesn't want us to play. Why am I saying all this? Once he even goes to take his nap, some of our siblings have not been at home since morning. They will even sneak him. Say, where's dad? Say, he's asleep. They will rush to the kitchen, eat, and run back again. So during the time he's taking his nap, things usually is to fall apart. But once the man is up, things begins to fall in shape. The reason why I'm saying this is because of the insecurity in this country. The banditry, the kidnapping we've been fixing in this country. The silence of the president is worrisome. I've spoken about President Muhammad Buhari in so many places and people tell me, don't be brainwashed, he's long dead. Now, if you look at, if you look at such statements and you look at the picture we have today in this country, you might not doubt what people have been saying. Some people say it's no longer with us. Some people say it's in transition. So I strongly believe why things are still very difficult for us over the insecurities because the person who is supposed to stand out to say an end to this, the person who is supposed to take the decision, to make the decision, the person who is supposed to be proactive, to give order to the law enforcement agencies to act, is no longer there. Okoro Stivo, good evening, my brother. The person is no longer there. So that's why I strongly believe things are falling apart. Like the scenario of me growing up as a child I gave to us. Yes, there's every tendency for the president not to be everywhere. But once he gets to know whatever that is going on in the country, once he wakes up over that issue, 
that issue is supposed to be to 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 come to an end such issue is supposed to come to an end but right now we have insecurity kidnapping banditry almost becoming the way of life in this country we've been deceived for so long with the word insurgency what is going on in the north is not insurgency it is the practice of the activities of war the practice of the activities of war not has been taken as a as a place as a training ground as we speak for the activities of war the northern part of nigeria has been taken as we speak as a training ground for the activities of war and we that are living in other regions cannot begin to feel as if we are not seeing these things because it's not happening within our own territory. The reason why we must stand up to cry out and begin to vote to know when that President Muhammad Buhari is still there or not, it's not too big to ask. Because the reason why a lot of people are still playing a lot of games around this whole thing is because the majority don't want to make any move. Let me put it this way. President Muhammad Dubari became the president because he got so many votes. So if we have so many votes, we also know the real situation of our president, whether he's sick, whether he's no longer there, or whether he's still there. If the majority have it, we'll definitely get to know the real state of our president. But a lot of us seems to be so very busy with activities. There is nothing wrong with it. A lot of us, we don't pray for war. None even need war. Though we've not experienced it, we've seen the preambles of it. Because I, as I stand right now, I can't tell you I've not seen war. Seeing what is going on in the north. People are being beheaded. For no just cause. People are with their rifle 247. People have combated with our, our soldiers. And our soldiers have not been able to drive them out of the forest. They've sent our soldiers to go and test their strength. And now they see that the soldiers were not able to vanquish them. That means they are strong. And what that also implies is that one day, these people will expand their boundaries. Now when they expand their boundaries, let me ask a simple question. How do we expect somebody who wakes up in the morning, knows his tie, and goes to the office to carry out his daily obligations. It's a good way of life. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, how can somebody who wakes up and picks up a career to study to become a medical doctor, always studying, reading, go to the university, go to school, how do you expect such a person to survive when the people who have been practicing the activities of war expand their boundaries to where such people are? People who leave their home, they open their shops to sell, to earn a living, and to feed and take care of their families. How can they combat with people who are already practicing the activities of war for how many years now? Even though you have a gun, you cannot be as skillful as someone who has been putting his rifle into practice. So this is a big security threat to everyone. I don't want to say this is a big security threat to the nation because if I use the word nation or Nigeria, a lot of people will be offended because so many people believe that they are not Nigerians. They are entitled to their opinions. I'm not here to question their opinions because things are not moving the right way. Things are not moving the right way. But I want us to leave sentiment aside. I want us to have just one opinion. And that opinion is this. What is going on in the North right now is a security threat to everyone. To everyone. You might be experiencing peace where you are now. By the time we come when these people will expand their boundaries. I've seen in cases where somebody who does not want to fight, but there's another person who feels he's so strong and he wants to test his strength, will come to start pushing who does not want to fight. The person will resist. They keep hitting the person hard to make sure the person fights back. 
So there's every tendency what you don't want can actually come to your doorstep one day, whether you want it or not. So what we need to do is to stand out in one voice. Where is our president? If we can have this achieved, then we will get to know what is actually going on. If we all begin to get busy to know what is going on in the north, it will not take us too long to know those sponsoring the practices of war in the north. They have sophisticated sponsors. So what we need to do is to stand out in one voice. Where is our president? If we can have this achieved, then we will get to know what is actually going on. If we all begin to get busy to know what is going on in the north, it will not take us too long to know those sponsoring the practices of war in the north. They have sophisticated sponsorship. That's why they've lasted up to this very day. One thing at a time. We all need to stand out to demand, to know where is our president? Where is he? So many things have been going on in this country. So many of us even expect our, our president will go down there to ascertain the damages. We won't even see him there. But later on, people will come to tell us the take of the Mr. President about such situation. One great thing I love so much about the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo administration, during his time, he had a series of meetings with ordinary citizens, not as of rep, not seen it, ordinary citizens in the streets. He will have meetings with them and they will be out there to ask him questions. In one of the meetings, so many arrogant questions were thrown at him. He never stand up for his, for his, his share to say, I know he's not going to, 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 to be in this meeting to the very end. He persevered. He took it all from the way it was coming from the citizens. And I strongly believe, I strongly believe that simple method helped him to fix so many things during his administration. But here we have, we have a president who cannot even come out. Most times, a lot of us have the interest to, to, listen, to listen or watch the, the nation uh, news because of waiting to hear the president to come and address the nation about a situation, about the challenge, about how we should go, about how we should go to solve our problems in the country. We want to hear from him because that will serve as a lot of inspiration to a lot of us. But we don't see any of these things. A lot of people are waiting for 2023 to decide, my dear, you cannot pass the examination of primary two where you actually failed in primary one. So it's better you remain in primary one. Don't say because you have uncle to help you get into primary two. Meanwhile, you don't pass the promotional exam in primary one. You will still not do well in primary two. So as at the level we are now, we are not doing well. It is time for us all to stand up to do what is right as one. To do what is right as one. Once we get to know the real state of our president, then the plans of so many people who have been covering a lot of things about the president will be, will be disorganized. That's the only way you can disorganize them. Now, so many people are coming out to tell us all different, all different things they want to say about what is going on in the nation. Someone is saying, don't address criminal as criminal, as a criminal. Call them fine names. Where they, or should I say, they, are, they don't know that good name exists for them to follow the path of wickedness. Why do you want us to call people who are practicing wickedness good names? If they want good names, they should do good things. That if, if they meet, if you meet them at gunpoint, we will obey them, you will respect them, you will give them all kinds, you will call them good names for them not to, to harm you. Yes, diplomatically, that's what you're supposed to do. When you come across someone with 
are gone and you don't have any and there are many you diplomatically obey whatever they want you to do at the time but that doesn't mean you should ordinarily or literally be calling a criminal a good name a criminal is a criminal if they don't want such name they should turn being away they should turn they should turn away being a criminal to become good people so that they can as well earn good names we've been ridiculed in this country so it's not about Nigeria anymore. It is about everyone. Don't just feel too comfortable in your zone because you are not experiencing war. There is war in the northern part of this country. We've been deceived with the name, with the word insurgency. It's not insurgency. What is going on there is not different from war. Practices of war is going on right there. They're killing people, beheading people, shooting guns. They've combated with our, our, our soldiers and they've not been vanquished out in dates. Then someone who came in to tell us that it will end Boko Haram or insurgency, the practice of war, of activities of war in the north, within some few months, out in dates, has not done anything about it. We cannot even hear, we cannot even get to see the same person come out to talk to us about the present situation and how on how he's going about it the challenge is facing yes he is really making effort but this is the reason why he has not been able to achieve it we've not been seeing him to come and address us and we are just feeling comfortable and everyone is waiting for 2023 they will begin to play our politics again those who want to enrich themselves during the campaign will begin to now enrich themselves meanwhile there is an agenda to wipe out people for setting people to take over. That is the pure agenda right now. Let me cite IPOP activities. IPOPs are not going, the members are not going anywhere to begin to commit all manner of uh, crime because they want a country called their own. They are going about it logically, diplomatically, because they know that what they are asking for is actually their own. So they don't need to begin to kill because of it. They was embarked in civil war. They saw how the people suffered. So because of the people, they have been logical to make sure that they don't lose more people. So they are going about it intellectually, hoping one day they will have what belongs to them. But these people who are going about killing and beheading people, they are doing such things to, to infuse fear into people because what they want to take is not their own. What they want to take is not their own. So that's why they are coming with full force. I've been hearing from so many people saying, nobody has the monopoly of violence. We know. I don't know what kind of uh, violence you want to exhibit with someone who has been living a life of war for years now. Sleeps with the rifle, wakes up with the rifle. So many of us, we see blood. We say, ah, ah, I see that apple one place and we're going to, to, to rescue the people. You see bones, you must cause on the ground. Someone said, no, I don't want to see this. I don't want the person run away. And how do you expect this kind of person to combat with someone who has been taught to derive joy in beheading a fellow human? They even lick the blood. But when you even see, when many people even see the blood, they did not spill on the ground. They, 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 they irritates them. That is how it's supposed to be because we are all humans. Once you feel, ah, this is my fellow human's blood, it irritates. I am not telling us now to begin to now live the life of war or to turn to begin to carry rifles up and down. Whether you are a doctor, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a trader, no matter who you are, this is the time we all need to rise up with one voice. The first thing is, where is our president? In one voice, with one voice, where is our president? If everyone comes together to ask where is our president, I don't think that any kind of people can stop us from knowing the truth, to know the real situation of things about our president. It is time. It's good you go after your career. You mustn't have to be like these people to end them. 
but we must begin to agitate now to end what is going on in the north. Let us not say, uh, is in the north, it's not here. One day to spread down to this place. Because when they remain there for so many, they've been there now for so many years. They've not been vanquished. They've been there for so many years. They've not been vanquished. So one day, they will feel the territory is now too small for them. They want to take more. And they will spread down to your own territory. Who do you expect to fight this fight? People who ordinarily, who are, who are career people, people who are starting to become a doctor, people who wake up and they go to the market to trade, to earn a living, to eat. I'm not so advising these people to now begin to go after carrying a rifle and begin to live useless life. But I am saying, let everybody begin to borrow each other voice to begin to speak to know where our president is. If we get to know the real situation of our president, we will know where we can start from. That will be a lot of eye-opener to us. Let us know. If he is so sick, he can no longer carry out any of his administrative obligations. There is no need of covering anything. If he's long dead, there is no need covering anything. It's not a taboo. It's not the first person to die in power. Gerard Ward died and was honorably buried. And someone else has to continue. You cannot be covering the real situation of a person at the detriment of the entire people. A lot of people are passing through a lot of pains because things are not moving fine. Because someone who's supposed to be in the office, to be proactive, to make this declaration, to give sanction, to give order, is no longer there. So the people who are there, what they, are, what they stand there to do is just to cover up until this time pass away so that the agenda can come through. So my people, this is not a time to play games with our lives. This is about our lives. For as much you are in this country, this is about our lives. What has been going on in the North is a big security threat to everybody in this country. And that's why everybody must stand up to demand and to know where the president is. That is where we can start from. Yes, like someone just said, my brother, president is dead. Yes. I've been hearing a lot. You are not the first person. You are not the first person. You are not the first person, my dear. You are not the first person. We've been hearing it. So are we just going to continue to say all this and things are just being jeopardized? Why can't we stand up? Because why a lot of people don't believe is that is because we don't have true evidence. The only way we can have evidence is to all, for all of us to vote, to rise up, to say we want to see our president. Not the usual people that used to see him. We send delegates there but they'll be on live on live recording. Let's know the real state of our president. Let people discuss with him 101. Let them ask him what is this challenge and what is he doing about the situation of this country? Not that written paper. Not that person that is being garnished and being published to us. Let people go to see why everybody will be on, on, on national TV watching and listening. To know if it is the body we know, then that is where we can start from. If Buari is long dead, if a lot of us saying these things, we are very sure, then Nigeria is in, is in great mess. A lot of people want to see it before they will know. It's true. It will be so disastrous for you to wait for war to come to your doorstep before you know that there is war in this country. The northern part of this country is the training ground for the activities of war. These people have sophisticated sponsorship. 
So many of our, of our, of our brothers who are in the military, who, who went there and they came back, so many resigned with their own, so many that have been sent there said, no, they are not going because those guys are not just existing on their own. They said those guys are not existing on their own. They have a sophisticated sponsorship that they've been taking the soldiers there to test their strengths. And really, we've seen their strength to some extent. When we get to know President Muhammad Buhari is no longer there, then we will not know how to begin to hold the northern, the northern part of this country, the leaders. We know how to hold them responsible for all these things that have been going on. If we all come together to as well know those who are part of the, the practice of the activities of war in the north, it will not be difficult for us. But a lot of us are not too very concerned about this. And it's lingering. So please, to whatever opinion you have, you need a country of your own. There is no problem because your country has been there. But one step before the other. For us all to come together to collaborate, to know when our president is there. Not a thing of some people will be coming out to say, I will not get time. <laughs> because it's going, to, it's going to affect everybody. Someone told me his experience during the Civil War. He said he started running from his place of work. <laughs> I don't know what we say. War is not beautiful. He said he started running from his place of work for his dear life. So you might be in your office. Someone might be in the market and say, Madam, how many, how much tomatoes you want, sir? We want buy. Before you get pa, to, 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 doom. You take off from there. How will such person fight and win? How will such person survive? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. How can such person survive? With someone who has been with rifle for how many years now? So many people inside the desert or the forest were captured when they were small. Now they've grown big with the mind of war. How can someone who wakes up and goes to the office to look for daily bread combat with such a person when the such a person encroaches into your own territory? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. It's not about I have a gun in my house. How skillful can you shoot? How skillful are you? When, when it comes to shooting, how skillful are you? Because someone is out there shooting every day. You can't compare yourself with such a person. You can't. You can't combat with such a person. You cannot, no matter how strong you are. The person will be more skillful because the person has been practicing for years. Of course, we know practice makes perfect. By the time these people feel they are now perfect, they are going to launch out. Because their agenda, as we speak, is total cleansing. So that they can take over what is not theirs. Those who believe in what belongs to them, they are logically, diplomatically fighting for it. But this set of people, they are fighting for what is not their own. So it is time for us all to rise up with in one, with just with one voice. This is the time. Where is President Muhammad Dubari? That should be the first question from everybody. Because what is going on in the north is a big security threat to everybody. Everybody, I mean. Nobody is excluded. Everybody. Then when we get to know the real situation of Grand Ebar President Muhammad Dubari, so that it, it will not just end at people saying he's dead, he's long dead. No, it's not enough. We can verify these things. So if we all stand up as one people, to demand and we get to know the truth. Other things will be just ordinary things to us for us to take care of. Because if we find out that a particular region is trying to play games, others are going to come together to have them vanquished and overwhelmed. Instead of these people spreading down into our own territory to have us overwhelmed with the sounds of war. With the sounds of war. 
we'll be seeing so many clips a lot of you don't watch the clips once you someone send it to you you just see that uh, there's blood of you don't wash i've been watching a lot of clips comfortably see how people behead humans on the name of we are too strong on the name of one thing or the other but the same clip that we send it to you you cannot wash it this person claim that we are one these same people doing this thing we all claim we are one they have freedom of movement they can come into your territory anytime any day with the notion of there is freedom of movement if you don't want to witness what you'll be seeing or clips the right thing to do now is to stand up to end what is going on in the north we have to end it they call it insurgency it is not They've taken the knot as a training ground for, for, the, for the practice of war activities. So we almost come together to end what is going on in the north once and for all. Let us not say, no, we are not from the north. No, we are not. If, because whether you like it or not, as we speak, a lot of people have been rendered homeless. So many people with businesses don't have business. As we speak, it's so difficult for so many people to start all over. And you tell me there is no war. And you telling me you are praying that there should be no war. And you believe there will be no war. When there are people who are already living with out of normal human senses. People derive joy beheading their fellow human who did not offend them. Just to claim one nonsense thing. And you are telling me there will be no war. You are telling me you are praying that there should be no war. But you don't want to do your own part to make sure that there should be no war. You have to do your part if you don't need war. The time is now. We demand to know where the president is. And if the president is not there, we want to know those who have been taking decisions on his behalf. This is how to get things done. We hold them responsible. They said the man there was doctored. Oh, fine and good. Where we'll find out those who doctored him, we will get to know them. They will pay dearly for it. This is how to have it done. Then everybody is just talking as if it's not a serious thing. Nobody's asking you not to go over your careers. Nobody's asking you to not start carrying guns up and down like these bandits. But what we are asking for is let's set a day aside for everybody to speak with one voice. Where is President Muhammad Buhari? At least majority will always win the vote. We don't need for the Senate or the, the House of Red to deliberate on it. We want to know where is President Muhammad Buhari? It we have to start from there. Let's know whether we truly have a president or not. They will know where to start from. Because it might be too late. For those of us who are waiting for 2023, it might be too late. It might be too late. It might be too late. Whatever agenda you are writing down now, whether you are an aspirant or whatever to present before the people, it might be too late. Because the test of time we are facing right now, we've not been able to pass it. I wonder how we are going to handle the things of 2023. I've said it before, and I'm repeating it again. This is a security alert. And what is going on in the North right now is a big security threat to everybody. Everybody. No matter who you think you are, is a big security threat to everybody. Everybody. 